I had the perfect date, the perfect plan, everything was almost done, and then boom, COVID hit. Guys, if you're engaged and you had to postpone your wedding or you just got engaged, congrats by the way, and you're planning your wedding during this pandemic, I'm gonna share with you a few tips that I learned along the way of planning this pre-pandemic and during pandemic, so stick around. Welcome back everybody! I'm Alice, you're watching on Le Lifestyle and this week we're going to talk about how I handled postponing my wedding. Blech. Womp womp womp. Yes. <sighs> Planning a wedding is supposed to be fun, exciting, yet it does have its stressful points. But then put in a pandemic and COVID into the mix, then anxiety and stress galore. And I was one of those brides that had a lot of anxiety and stress from the beginning of, from the start of this pandemic. And it hasn't been fun planning this wedding until now. So we're going to talk about how to make it fun. Side note, because I know some people might come at me for this. I know coronavirus is a very serious virus. I know a lot of people have been affected and still are affected. I am not trying to take anything away from the virus or what it's caused to this world because um, I know how much so many people have worked to fight it and I thank God every day for my health and for the health of all the first responders trying to fight this still today when things are still opening up and there is a chance of a second wave. So not trying to take away from the seriousness of the matter. I'm just trying to say that everyone has gone through it and experience it very differently and if you've been a bride planning your wedding for 2020 then what should have been a fun experience and a very light fluffy one <laughs> basically has gotten this black shadow black cloud over it and it's almost like you're walking in the rain the whole time so like I just want to say that these brides deserve to mourn their wedding if they postponed it or canceled it um, or if they had to, you know, make it smaller or have a Zoom wedding. You know, we're allowed to feel sad, although we absolutely know, and I speak for everyone, everyone knows this, we absolutely know that being able to plan and throw a kind of party such as a wedding is a very big privilege that not everybody has and a lot of people don't have like food, water, shelter. We understand that we're, although there's all of that in the world, we're still allowed to feel sad for something that happened to us. Some of you have seen my bath travel video that I did like a month ago or something and in there I kind of snuck in our engagement and so quickly put this is how we got engaged we went to Bath for a camping trip back country um, we are very outdoorsy couple um, so we went to Bath and I sort of had a feeling that Tanya would propose then and I was kind of bugging him because I really wanted to know if he was um, Come the second day, we're at Morn Lake, Lake Louise. We do this hike to Devil's Thumb. And we, as we're coming back down, there's this field right next to Lake Louise. This guy pulls my hand and he goes in the middle of the field. There's this lady not too far with a huge camera just pointing it at us. And I'm just thinking, okay, she's trying to take a beautiful picture of Lake Louise in the mountains. Um, lo and behold, she's actually the photographer of our engagement shoot. And this guy goes down on one knee, proposes, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I'm sweaty, I'm, I'm dressed in my hiking clothes, I'm all full of dirt because of the hike. We had to climb like a really steep hill. Um, and I'm like, really, you picked now? But it was super cute, it was perfect, um, and that's how it happened. So 
as soon as we got back, well, not as soon, but let's say two week buffer, I just something clicked in my head. And I'm like, I need to plan this wedding now. Everything needs to be done right away. I don't know why I'm crazy like that. And so I started planning the wedding. Uh, it was because we we're both from different cities. I'm from Montreal. He's from Toronto. I have family all across the States. He has family in different countries, Lebanon. We have family in Armenia, Greece. Like we have so many people to invite to this wedding. We had to pick a date that was good for both countries, Canada, US at least, so that everyone could show up because we love to party, we're Armenian. We have huge weddings. <laughs> we decided to go with 10, 10, 20, 20. And I'm pretty sure a lot of brides watching this, you're gonna be like, yep, I know someone who had that date. Um, you know, it's a pretty cool day, okay? Like, it's a pretty cool day. Yeah, it's a cool day, okay? Um, <laughs> let's actually jump in because I promised you guys five things that you should know or do um, if you've postponed it or planning your wedding during this pandemic. So here's number one. Number one is buy a planner, like a binder planner, or hire a wedding planner very 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 important if you think you could do everything by yourself get the binder planner or if you think you're going to be even more stressed and whatnot hire a wedding planner there they provide different types of contracts so you could have a type of contract where they only assist you advise you and things you should do so you control most of it and it could go up until to a contract where they handle everything from A to Z and then you just say yes, no, yes, no, if you like it or not. This is the binder I use. It's from uh, the knot.com has designed this book. And why I say to use a binder like this if you're doing it solo is because the knot.com and other wedding websites like give you point by point what you should do for each thing so you don't forget a single thing and also they provide you with like questions you should ask vendors um specific questions that maybe you never thought of asking they also take the guesswork out of the whole thing so you don't really have to guess what you're supposed to ask when you go for meetings when you're interviewing v vendors and stuff so my closest group a friends gifted this to me when we first got engaged we got back from Banff and they're like get ready <laughs> so I honestly thank them because this is a very complete binder the other cool thing with uh, this binder is the knot.com not not only do they have a website where they have blog posts and whatnot um, they also have an application so if you don't have your binder with you and you're trying to search for the vendors that you found, the application is much easier to use because it's right on your phone. You could go ahead and look for the vendors in your city. Just the thing for the Daunt.com app is US based. So I actually use weddingwire.ca and the Daunt.com at the same time. Tip number two, if you decide to postpone and you haven't reached out to your vendors, your venue, um, to ask for a new date, do it right now. Like stop the video and call them up right now because most of the weddings from March to June were pushed to next year. And there are people who had already planned their wedding for 2021. So 2021 weddings were there. 2020 weddings got pushed. They have set their dates. So a lot of dates are gone. If you decide to postpone it, here's my greatest advice to you. Call up your venues, especially the church and your, um, your party location, the venue where you're having your ceremony, um, whatever, either one, if it's not a church, if it's just a location where you're having your ceremony, Call them up and ask them what if you want it sooner than later, like so sooner in the 2021 or later in the 2021, ask them what they say still have available. I'm pretty sure anything until June 2021 is all booked up. 
I hope the urgency is clear here. Call up your vendors. And once your church, your ceremony location, your reception, they've okayed the date, then you're gonna have to call up all your under vendors right away and be like, are you okay with this date? Are you okay with this date? Are you okay with this date? Originally, we had picked a date where our reception was fine, our church was fine, but my photography videographer was at a different event. And I did not wanna switch photographers. I'm telling you, this person is amazing. So I did not wanna switch. And for that reason, I postponed my wedding to further away during the year. So that might happen to other brides too. So double check like the date that you originally want and then you might have to think of backup dates. Tip number three, if you've just started planning your wedding or you're postponing, I hope you're sending out electronic save the dates. And let me tell you why. Because there are certain websites that even provide you to collect information from your guests right away. So you ask around for their emails, send the electronic uh, save the date, and then you'll get their address if you're going to send paper invitations for the wedding. And because you're also collecting more information, you already have their email, it's the best way to communicate with your guests. See, we had sent electronic save the dates early on in this year, I believe January, and we were already set everything was set for us to reach out to our guests and be like here's a new update here are, uh what we've decided to do and it was super quick it was just like a type send everyone gets the message which is like beautiful plus you're being eco-friendly by not sending out paper save the dates if especially if you're going to send out paper invites save the dates get tossed out so try to think about the environment as you're doing all of this because a lot of things will go in the garbage. It's also not worth the money if they're going in the garbage after a week or so. Best way to communicate with your guests is through email or through the platform of these electronic invite websites. I'll put the link in the description. Tip number four, and this would be very, very amazing, especially if you postpone your date celebrate your original date anyway so for us it was 10 10 20 so come thanksgiving we're gonna have a little party just us with whatever the new guidelines would be in october to like just celebrate that date because it, it is still meaningful if you guys just, a lot of people i know decided to do a civil marriage you could do your civil marriage that day and have like a zoom wedding on that day and then just push the party for next year um if you're not traditional <laughs> there are many ways you could celebrate that date so it's still special for you because it's it's still your date technically and tip number five especially if you just started planning don't worry you could still plan your wedding nothing is technically on pause anymore a lot of places are opening up you could either go in in person obviously wear your gloves wear your masks you can't go to the vendor with many people but you and a trusted person so either your partner your maid of honor a parent whatever they're accepting two to three people in each location i believe and it's by appointment so it's very possible for you to still plan find your dress uh get your bridesmaids dresses everything is still possible if you don't feel comfortable going to these locations physically many of the vendors especially when we just started the quarantine they were open with virtual meetings um such as facetime zoom i did a couple of meetings that way and they're still doing it now they're very open-minded they really really just want are there they really are just there to help you um feel more comfortable planning your wedding in these stressful times i guess here's an extra tip don't put your life on pause because your wedding got postponed or canceled the wedding is not everything you still have a life you have a probably have a job you have a business you still need to live your life. The wedding was just gonna be a party, a very, very meaningful one, but it's still gonna happen just at a later date. So don't put your life on pause. Here's another example. I live in Montreal, Tanya lives in Toronto. We won't be able to move in together 
and be in the same city doesn't mean I'm just going to wait around and be like, well, I have another year to just sit here and wait because the wedding didn't happen. No, our life continues. We need to, we need to um, keep a positive mindset. We need to keep moving forward. The party will come. The ceremony will come. That meaningful date will still happen. The wedding will happen. Just don't put your life on pause. Trust. It's not the end of the world. Definitely not the end of the world. We're going to get through it. And then we're going to end up celebrating and partying all everyone together. <laughs> so ladies, I hope you got value from this video. If you did and you have, if you know of other brides who would probably need to hear what I have to say, please share it with them. Click the thumbs up button as well. I would totally appreciate it. We make videos every week. So don't forget to subscribe. Bye.